years ago at a Make Poverty History rally, Nelson Mandela said, sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. You can be that great generation. Making poverty history sounds good, but can it ever be more than just a noble dream? I'm Mel Fletcher and this is Edges. Back in the year 2000, the UN General Assembly adopted the Millennium Development Goals, one of which was to eradicate hunger and poverty by the year 2015. One of their immediate targets was to halve the number of people who are living on less than one dollar a day. Right now, that's about one billion people. Today we're in Copenhagen, Denmark. Behind me is the Stock Exchange building. In 2004, a group of respected world economists met in this city. Their goal was to prioritise world problems based on where economic resources could be put to best use. In what's been called the Copenhagen Consensus, they agreed that one of the world's top priority challenges, and one where results could be achieved, is reducing malnutrition and hunger. Then in 2005, many thousands of people came together across the world for a unique music event called Live 8. They came together from all walks of life, from across the ethnic and generational divide, not just for a musical celebration, but to make a statement. Effectively, they were saying, we believe that poverty can be ended, and we'd like to be a part of achieving that. So it seems there's been a growing public consensus all around the world that in an age of high tech and globalization, we ought to be able to do something to end the blight of extreme poverty. It can't be right that 850 million people are chronically malnourished all the time, when for just a relatively small investment of world income, we could produce reliable food supplies, control diseases, and even lift nations out of debt. The news often informs us of poverty created by natural disasters such as flooding, tsunamis and earthquakes. But are these the only cause? Surely man has something to do with it too. Well, I've come here to Trafalgar Square, London to find out. Excuse me, sir, can I just ask you a question about poverty? Yes. I was just wondering whether you think it's caused mainly by man or by natural disasters. I think it's mainly caused by man. I think um, we've got a lot of um, bureaucrats and high-paid people that are taking up far too much money and should be getting it back into the community. Man, man has to do with it people, I'm afraid. I think it's a bit of both. I think even where natural disasters play a part, I think it's the fact that people have been forced to live in certain areas or man's failure to respond in situations that increase the consequences of people living in poverty. I guess man has something to do with it, but then again it's to do with the luck of where you're born and what you put your parents are and their circumstances. If we didn't have poverty then we wouldn't have rich people, so I guess it's all about man and the uneven distribution of money. It's not made by nature, it's made by man. The causes of poverty have never been straightforward, but everybody today agreed that man should not be let off the hook. They say that human selfishness, greed and war all have a great impact on poverty just as much as natural disasters. But they say unlike natural disasters, these things could and should be changed. So what are the factors that contribute to extreme poverty? Well, one, of course, is population growth. Every month there are 7 million extra mouths to feed in the world, and the world's population will reach 9.5 billion by the year 2050. 20 years after that, says the UN, it might begin to decline. Of course, while the global population is growing, so is the world's economy and the gap between average individual incomes in rich nations and poor nations is shrinking. So some of the poor are doing better, but not the poorest of the poor who tend to be stuck at the bottom. Every year, 10 million children will die simply because their families, their communities and their nations are too poor to sustain them. Rising food prices are another real problem, especially for people who rely on food imports. Sadly, even when prices are low, millions will still starve. That's because the poorest of the poor live in outlying areas, 
eking out a living on meagre land holdings a long way from where food is distributed. Meanwhile, diseases like HIV AIDS, hepatitis B and malaria add even more misery to the lives of the very poor. Every year there are something like 500 million new cases of malaria alone, most of them among children in sub-Saharan Africa. And on top of disease, these people have to face the threats of droughts and floods which threaten to wipe out what crops they do have.